this is tonight this is an advanced session that we supposed to be doing which is more suited for the guys who are still learning the strategy right um, but like I said in the telegram channel uh, I have been getting a few questions that not worried as much but I just feel like we should address this particular topic before we sort of like branch into the more um, I don't know, more entertaining stuff because I know a lot of guys love to learn. I mean, that's how the human brain actually is. And therefore, I just decided for us to focus on this and then we move on to the next step, which is going to be the EMAs in next, next week session on Tuesday, 7 p.m. All right. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. I don't already know. If you have a question, raise your hand. I will unmute your mic and you will be able to speak. All right. Once you speak, obviously, we'll just have a conversation and you'll be able to discuss whatever question that you might have. Alternatively, you can just type in the chat, right? There should be a button that says chat somewhere around there on your Zoom app. Not quite familiar on it on the phone, but just type there whatever question that you might have and that question will pop up on my end. I'll be able to repeat it so everyone knows what I'm answering and then I'll just proceed to answer the question from there. As I said, if the volume is a bit low, I do apologize, guys. Like I said, I'm using um, spare headphones because my mic just broke another one. But yeah, in any case, let's get started, guys. All right, the session is being recorded, and if you miss any parts of it, you will be able to get the recording at the end of the session. I will send through this Excel spreadsheet in the Telegram channel as well. And what you need to do is it won't open on your phone because I don't believe on the phone you will have by default an Excel spreadsheet uh, reader. Right? So it's either you download an Excel spreadsheet reader on your phone, sort of like those Microsoft Office um, suits, or you just transfer it through to your laptop and you just use it from your laptop. So you can use either or but it won't open up. So I just thought I should address this because last time I sent it, a lot of guys complained that they couldn't open it on their phones. So just make sure you do that this time, okay? Now, lot sizing, as I'm sure some of us are familiar with it, is basically how many contracts you're willing to put up in order to find out if a position or a trade is actually going to work, right? So what you need to do in that um scenario is well logically what you're supposed to be doing is you look at the total account size that you actually have in your account because my lot size will not be the same as your lot size okay but that's uh, one of the common things that common mistakes that a lot of guys will make in the beginning where i will use one standard contract for example and everyone will use one standard contract because they feel like it's supposed to be universal okay so let's say my trading partner is also going to use one standard contract but that's not the case your lot size is primarily determined by your account size and the percentage of risk that you want to apply for each and every trade because when it comes to markets okay we're working entirely with probabilities okay so we work with probability and therefore we don't want to risk too much on any single position, right? We want to put in um, a decent amount that's gonna make us some profit if we are right on a position, but we don't wanna to lose too much where we're in a position where we have to be sort of like catching up. Right? That's the worst position that you can be in because let's say for example, you have a 100 US dollar account, okay? And you lose 50 us dollars now in order for you to go back to that 100 us dollars you actually have to make 100 percent of your account just to be back where you were before All right so now from that 100 dollars you have 50 us dollars and now you need to make 100 percent of that 50 dollars in order to be back where you were which I don't know to you, but to me, it sounds insane. So um, lot sizing, as I said, is primarily 
a uh, something determined by the percentage risk that you want to apply and obviously of course your your lots or rather your account size so let's just use this right this is something that i've been using ever since i can remember i haven't used this one in a while i just found it in the in my telegram folder but you can see at the top right i'll i'll share this with everyone obviously but you have the account right which is basically the amount that you have in your trading account you have the risk percentage um, which is primarily how much you're willing to put down to find out if a position is going to work or a trade is going to work. Um, you have the actual risk size in dollar terms. So we convert that percent, or let's say, let's say 3% in this case, um, 3% of 562 is 16.86%. Okay. And pip value right how much one pip actually is okay so that's the simplest way in which i can explain that so how much a single pip because remember when you're on your charts you don't and the, the, the charts are moving let's say you buy one standard contract on the euro usd and it rises it doesn't it's not going to rise one thousand dollars for you Okay, you might see it at the bottom of your MT4 platform, 1,000 US dollars, but it's actually moving in increments of pips, what we call pips. So the pip value itself is what we see here. Okay, now the lot size is the amount of contract that you are willing to buy or to sell, right? And the lot size is a number that we obviously get from the stop loss and the percentage risk, and then that's going to determine the lot size that we're going to be using in in this particular um platform and then with this this is basically the amount of pips in terms of profit or target rather for the week so this is not that important for this particular example um, what we're focusing on rather is this column over here right so when we chop and change a few things you'll start to see the lot size change and I just want everyone to be familiar with using this spreadsheet because once you know how to use it yourself, obviously, then you sort of have a very good idea of what is exceeding your risk. Because if, for example, you have a system or a trading strategy that wins 90% of the trades that you take, right, which is a really good win ratio. Now, if you win 90% of your trades, right, over time, you're going to make a lot of money. Over time, you're going to make a heck of a lot of money. But here's the issue. If you aren't around for those nine out of 10 trades, because if you have a $100 account and your lot size is too big for that $100 account and you wipe out your account in one trade, right, and that following nine trades were actually gonna make you some money. The following nine trades, it's just that you started off on a losing trade and it wiped your account and then you're not around for the following nine positions or nine trades rather that were gonna make you some profit, right? So the importance of lot sizing or um, choosing your lot size according to, to your account size is simply because you want to be able to be there for the winning trades, okay? I simply put trading in this sense is that, I mean, there's no way around losing trades. It doesn't matter who you are, where you were born, how old you are, how much money you have. If you trade in the market, you are going to take some losses, right? You're going to have a loss here. You're going to have a loss there. You're going to have a winning trade there. But the most important thing is that you want to be around for the winning trades, right? Obviously your winners need to be much bigger than your losing trades, but you want to be around for those winners. So let's take an example here, right? Let's, let's change this number and just make it something a bit simpler, All right? So let's use 1000 US dollars as an example, okay? All right, so, 
when you're breaking this down, right, so each and every week, let's say each and every week, you just go through this, right? Now, 1,000 US dollars obviously translates roughly to about 14,000 Rand at the present moment. Uh, probably like 1398 or something like that but let's just for the sake of our own sanity let's just use um 14,000 rand okay now let's say you see a trade right you see the trade and you feel like the trade is has a lot of potential right you see a lot of things that we discussed and it looks like it's setting up a lot of those things right it's ticking all the right boxes and therefore it is one of the high probability trade setup, which means there's a very high probability that you're going to be making some decent money off that trade, right? So what you do is you apply a certain percentage risk. Okay, now in the beginning, your main objective, right? If you're not profitable yet, you'll your, your 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 objective is not to jump from let's say losing trader right if you're not making any money to someone who just makes money overnight right it's a process so you want to be let's say if you're losing losing right and then you stop losing money right because if you're losing money and the guy and the second person or the guy next to you is not losing any money, but is not making any money. He is still doing better than you are. So the main objective now is just to make sure that if while you're in the learning stage, right, while you're still on that learning curve, you don't blow your account, right? You don't lose all your funds. So we'll apply a 1% risk in this example, okay? Because if you use 1% risk, it means that you will need to lose 100 trades in a row for you to lose your entire trading stake. And I mean, I don't know, but it, to me, it sounds a bit far-fetched that anyone would go 100 trades. I mean, even like a three-year-old or two-year-old it would be very difficult for them to go 100 trades, like consistently losing with 1% risk. Okay. All right. Um, I think we have a question. I don't see who it is. Okay, let me just unmute your mic. Um, Google, just please uh, make sure that you you click on join audio, right? Just make sure you click on join audio because I can't unmute you at this point because it seems like you haven't, all right, there you go. Yeah, all right, Jay, you can speak now. Yes, Google, do you have, did you have a question? Hello? Okay, guess not. All right, so let's say 1%, right? So 1% here is represented as 0 0.01. Okay, so that is gonna be a 1%. So initially, you are only risking 1% for each and every single trade that you actually take. Now, you could have the potential to make 5%, right? You could have the potential to make 10%. You could have the potential to make 12%, which is, I think I've mentioned to you guys that um, a trading partner of mine doesn't take anything with less than eight times what he actually risks. So if you risk $100, he will not take anything that doesn't provide him with at least 800 US dollars in terms of profit if he's risking $100, All right? So that's, that is one is to eight risk reward. So this 0 0.01 being 1% is equivalent in dollar terms to ten dollars right so this is the only amount that we're actually willing to risk is ten dollars to find out if this very next trade we're going to take is going to be a winner or a loser so we're risking eight i mean ten dollars uh, let's say if we have a risk reward or a reward rather of eighty dollars then we're risking ten dollars to make eighty dollars okay now the pip value on that is 0 0.33.
Okay. Now the lot size that you will be using on a 1000 US dollar account and your stop loss needs to be something that we obviously take into account every time because if you have a much wider stop loss, generally your lot size will be a bit smaller. And if you have a small stop loss, right? If you have a very tight stop loss, let's say 10 pips or 15 pips or something along those lines, then your lot size can be a bit bigger for this 1%. Okay, so let's just make a practical example. All right, so it basically takes this, um, let me do this, uh, I can mess it up the whole thing. Okay, I'm actually not used to using this LibreOffice, okay, so I do apologize. Let me just press it. Okay, so this 10, right, this is the pip value, right? And it's determined by obviously the stop loss as well as the risk. Okay, so in this instance, the stop loss is 30. So if we change this stop loss to let's say 100, okay. Ugh. This thing is really just getting on my nerves now. I know I'm supposed to press enter, but I'm actually not doing it. All right, you can see the lot size was reduced to 0 0.01. Okay, so if we go back to the lot, to the pip value again, and we change this 100 to let's say a much tighter stop loss, let's say 10 pips and press enter, you can see the lot size increased to 0 0.10. Right, and obviously profits did increase as well. So is that making sense so far for everyone? So at the beginning of the week, this is something that we generally are gonna be doing. So let's say now we're working on a 50 pip stop, right? Let's say almost each and every single position, our average stop loss is gonna be 50, right? So what we're gonna do is, okay, can't believe I just did that. I don't know what's going on yet. Um, all right, there we go. All right, so let's say our stop loss on average is going to be 50, right? You see, we change only at pip value, right? We change that to 50. Okay, and I'll remember to click enter next time. And then you can just copy from week one, week two, week three to week four, because you can see on the different weeks, stop loss is at 30, and here stop loss is 30, and here again, stop loss is 30. And only in week one, our stop loss is actually 50. So we just change that and it copies our stop loss. And then our lot size is determined according to our risk. Okay, now you can see that the lot size is much larger in the second week. It is 0 0.06. Okay, so 0 0.06 and the reason for that is that you remember in week one, we chose to only risk 1% per trade. But here over in week two, we have 0 0.03, which is 3% per trade. So if we change that from the 3% through to 1%, we're gonna see that the lot size dropped to 0 0.02. And then we change that again. Um, that also drops to 0 0.02 and boom, 0 0.02. All right, the pip value is changed only slightly and the risk size changed only slightly as well, but the lot size remain the same. Now, once the main objective of us trading small, especially at the beginning, is that, um, okay, we, we're still gonna do this in much more detail a bit later on, but the reason which we do this, right, especially in the beginning when you're starting off a new fresh account, you just wanna 
trades more, build it up, sort of like build this buffer, right? This cushion where you will be able to trade more effectively. Right? I know some guys like to withdraw whatever they put in the account as soon as they have X amount of US dollars in that account. Um, but I think the wiser thing would be to increase your risk percentage incrementally, right? I'll go through the risk management model later on, as I mentioned. But let's say, for argument's sake, we decide that we, after a month, right, we're comfortable with um, the way we're actually trading, right? We're consistently hitting the mark, right? We're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. And we verify that even the trading system actually works effectively. So we change our lot sizing for that particular month, which is on the week five, to let's say 0 0.02. Now we feel comfortable. Okay, this won't work. And for that month, we risking 2% of the account. By the fifth week, we have 1,082.43, okay. So let's just say $1,082. And our risk size has increased. And obviously you can see that we haven't changed because the lot size jumped from 0 0.02 to 0 0.07, right? That shouldn't happen. Lot size, if we're jumping from 1% to 2%, it should jump incrementally. Okay, boom, there we go. Right, so week one, we are trading with 0 0.02 and week eight, we're trading with 0 0.05. Now, the brilliant thing about this, okay, is once you are comfortable enough with your trading, right, once you start becoming consistent, then you can actually increase the percentage risk. Okay, so... In month one, for example, you made $1,236. And let's say this is six months, right? On the sixth month, right? You've built yourself a nice buffer, right? Essentially, I don't like to use this term, but you essentially playing with the market's money, right? I don't like anything that says playing uh, when it comes to trading, right? Because obviously it's not a game, but you're essentially playing with the market's money. And you'll be able to increase incrementally by week, probably week five, you'll be on 5%, and you can go up as high as 10%. I'll show you guys this in much more detail. But usually the very first month is gonna be very slow, very dry. But as you become familiar with the, the your, your, the way that you actually trade and all of that stuff and the trading system that you're using, then it becomes much easier and you'll be able to increase the amount of risk because now you have a nice good buffer. And you can see by the six month, you, let's say banking, this is 64,000 rand. Okay, off the same account, which was growing at a very slow rate. First month, 1,000 Rand, second month, 2,000 Rand. But by the six month, right? This is just an example. By the six months, you have like in 64,000 Rand uh, profit just from making sure that you follow a certain risk control guideline, which allows you to sort of like take advantage of the market um, once you are extremely, extremely comfortable with it, right? Because after the first two, first month or two of trading and you're doing so profitably, consistently, and you're doing all the right things, I mean, the confidence just naturally builds and you're not extremely worried about anything else. Okay. So sort of like all the fear and anxiety that a lot of guys experience just naturally fades away once you start becoming consistent. So. As I was saying, these are the benefits of then following a certain risk control guideline or, or plan because now you can, you can sort of like weather the short 
term anxiety of worrying too much about, all right, am I risking too little here? Am I risking too much? And you have something set and you can put in whatever account size that you currently have, okay? If you have a $100 account, for example, boom, you can see, lot size, right? Obviously, if it's 0 0.00, the minimum that you can trade is 0 0.01. So you'll just plug in 0 0.01 there and only in probably third week or so, you'll start increasing your lot size from 0 0.01 to 0 0.02. Okay, and first first month eight dollars, right? Peanuts, right? Second month doesn't even pay for the for the for the Wi-Fi, right? First month eight dollars, second month eighteen, third month fifty-eight, eighty-six, hundred and twenty-five, right? Four hundred dollars. So, like I said, this is just an example that you can actually use, and with how we're gonna be taking a look at things, right? and how we're gonna be structuring the risk control model, it will allow for the guys who like to wrap things up a bit, okay? And for the guys who are a bit more conservative, who just wanna take it slow with a bit more capital to trade with, because obviously the way in which you trade will be determined primarily, it seems, by how much capital you actually have at your disposal, okay? Unfortunately, that's the case because someone trading with 1 million US dollars isn't as anxious to make a high percentage as someone trading with $100 or $10. I mean, even if you make 1% per month on a million dollar account, you made some decent profits. But if you do that, obviously, on a $10 account, I mean, you'd probably be looking at different ways to actually make money. Okay. All right, guys. Um, it's close to 7.30 right now. So I think it's time for us to actually take any questions. All right. So if there's any questions, you can shoot them through now. Just do them on the, you can send them through via the chat or just, um, Raise your hand, I'll be able to unmute your mic so you'll be able to talk, all right? Um, so, now let me just finish up with the, with the document. Obviously, as I said, the main or the most important point that I was trying to get across is the actual lot sizing, right? So seeing as that we're done with that one, right? we have about 10 minutes left. Seeing as that we're done with that one, um, I'll just explain briefly the rest of the document. Okay, so you'll be able to use it effectively. And right over next to lot size is the target pips, all right? Let's say, for example, on average, uh, per week, you wanna target 100 pips. Okay, so if you change this number, let's say to 300 pips, you can see that the dollar amount also changes, right? If you lazy like me, okay, and you're like, okay, like 50 pips. All right, if you do 50 pips, all right, boom, I come away with $1 for one week's worth of trading. I mean, who couldn't live off that? <laughs> okay, so that is the, the, the amount of pips target per week. Okay, now there's gonna be Black Swan events or Black Swan weeks. I can say, and you might get, let's say 600. I mean, you might get 600 pips in a day or two days, whatever the case may be. There's gonna be occasions where that does happen. Okay, but I think the most important thing is to sort of like have this um, average that you'd like to see. I know it's very difficult to actually set outcome goals, I've said this before, setting outcome goals when it comes to trading is very difficult because the thing is, you can't really control the market. If the market is not moving, you can't make 100 pips. So if you only trade one market, for example, the Euro dollar, and your target is to make 100 pips each and every single week, and the market doesn't move the entire week. I mean, it's very difficult to control that part. What you can control is 
setups you trade, um, how much you risk per trade, and all of those other process um, before you enter the trade and during the trade. But you can't inevitably control what happens to the actual market. Right. You might not get a trade for three or four days, right? Thursday and then Friday you get one trade and that trade is a losing trade. And you end off your week on minus, let's say, 50 pips. So this is more of a guideline, right? This is not something that you want to enforce on yourself to be like, all right, every week I must get 100 pips. Because that's going to lead to a mentality which is not really well suited for trading, right? It probably might work in, let's say, a sales environment where you like have to rush and, you know, get the target and stuff like that. You push, push, push. But I mean, in the market, you're not pushing people. You actually, you can't push the market. Okay, you can't impose your will on the market and then suddenly things turn around. So, like I said, you can just leave it as it is. Just, just leave it at 100, right? Boom, as it is. And here you'll be able to see profits, okay? And here's the dollar amount for that entire month. And here's the rand amount, which is multiplied by 15, I believe. Multiplied by 15. Depending on what the exchange rate is, you can just change this to 14, okay? And not do what I just did. I just press enter. Don't do what I just did. And the thing about the smaller accounts is that on a much smaller account, it's much easier to risk higher in terms of percentages. Because I know guys who on a hundred dollar account trade 0 0.10. Right. Guys on a ten dollar account 0 0.05. I don't know how this stuff happens. But apparently it does so hopefully this has cleared up a lot of the confusion you just download this you take this and you use it as your i don't know sort of like your risk control planner for the week right you don't change your lot size you it, it it's not erratic it's not based off how much i want to make today or whatever the case may be Okay, the difference between lot size and risk percent is that lot size is the amount of contracts that you are actually going to buy or sell. Okay, so if we're talking 0 0.01, that is a micro contract, right? So that is 1,000 units that you are either buying or selling right i just want to explain the two first and the risk risk percent is dependent right it's variable so it's dependent on the actual account so the risk size on a hundred dollar account let's say we're using one percent risk is going to be one dollar and the risk percent on a hundred dollar account, let's say risk percent would bump it up to five percent, the risk size is going to change to five dollars. Okay. So the main difference between the two is that one is dependent on your account. Okay, it's a certain percent of your account, the amount of money you are willing to put down to say, all right, this is the amount of money I'm willing to risk to find out if this trade is going to actually work or not. And the lot size is the amount of contracts you are going to buy or sell based off the risk size itself. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And so, the main thing that you just, because the lot size is what you're going to be punching into your MT4 platform, right? 
So at the end of the day, once you've done all this number crunching, this is what you're going to be punching into your M24 platform, right? So when you click buy or new order rather, you'll be given two options, whether you want to buy or you want to sell. And the symbol that you want to buy or sell, obviously market execution and all of that stuff, but the amount of contracts or the lots is this part that you're actually going to be punching in. So if we just quickly go through to this, so this is what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, I think it's written volume. So new order, let's say you want to place an order. We have a hundred dollar account and our spreadsheet says that the lot size is supposed to be 0 0.01 okay and the stop loss is supposed to be 50 pips so what we would do then in this example is that we'll take volume 0 0.01 boom and let's say we want to buy the gbp usd at market right we just click on buy boom and then click on okay now if we drag our stop loss to 50 pips You can see on the left hand side here the amount of pips to 50 pips. This dollar amount that we actually see, this profit, this minus 5.03 USD, should be equal to the risk size that we actually have on the um, Excel spreadsheet. All right, I hope this is the demo. Okay, um, it should be equal to the risk size we actually saw on that spreadsheet okay if not we got a problem okay perfect all right guys we have about a, less than a minute left in fact and if you guys don't have any questions i will end off the session here right and i will be sending through the excel spreadsheet in a moment for everyone and if you missed any parts of the session you can get just get the recording later on right wish you guys have uh, Great evening. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you guys um, next week, Tuesday, in the advanced session at 7 p.m. Okay. Yes.